Hi, this is Adrian. I work at the Mooney Valley Libraries, specifically the Avondale Heights Library. And I'm here today with Jess, who's from Youth Services, and Dylan, who is the founding member and host of the video game tournament at the library. Um, the group is known as Ga uh, sorry, the group is known as Northwest Gamers. Dylan is rolling his eyes at me already because I screwed that up. But don't worry, it's all good. Uh, so we've been running these video game competitions at the library since about 2012 and um that's eight years and obviously we've had a lot of really good times then so we thought we'd get together during this crisis that we've been going through at the moment uh and we'd interview dylan uh and and he can take it from there but first uh jess would you like to talk about youth services role in in the video game competitions yeah absolutely so we were kind of around avondale heights library in the early days uh just hanging out doing drop-in and it kind of we were present at the time when uh, Dylan and the crew had decided that the tournaments were something that they wanted to pursue so uh, in terms of getting grants and things which I know that Dylan will get into uh, when we actually probably talk but yeah we were kind of there along for the journey to support libraries as well as uh, Dylan and the crew to actually get these off the ground and to see where it was going to go. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. And the numbers, I remember the numbers started off relatively low. I mean, it was a decent turnout, but then we sort of really over the years boosted it up to sometimes having as many as 50 participants at a time. Um, in terms of average, I think it's around 30 people that, that come along, which is quite a large number. Um, I think it's been one of those really successful library events that has just continued to, to roll on year after year. And how many a year do you think there are, Dylan? Is there three three a year, is it? Oh, we, these days we do about four a year because we do one every school holidays. Okay, cool. And now I will introduce Dylan, who's the star of this show. So he is the leader of the Northwest Gaming Group. Uh, and Dylan, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of your involvement with the library and the gaming and, and you know, your partnership with your services? Um, yeah, take it from there. Well, when the tournaments first began, I was just a participant for several years. It all started in 2012. I was at the very first tournament, which if you went there, it was much different than any other tournament we've had in the future. It, the games weren't the usual games. We were playing Mario Kart and it was split by age and there weren't that many participants. But it was a good beta test of things to come. I've heard about the tournament because it happened to be in the library and I go to the library all the time. So I thought, yeah, I'll go over and check it out with a friend. So that was how it started. And then the next couple tournaments began. The next few tournaments were a lot more like what we had. We were playing Smash Brothers. We were getting quite a few good numbers because by that point, youth services would regularly hang out at the library so we could promote the tournaments and people would hang out there. Okay. Cool, that's good. Um, Jess, did you want to add anything to that at all? I think that's that's pretty much the early days. Yeah, we were hanging out, making sure that you know young people were coming to the library, and video games and board games seemed to be like the interest. But video games took off a lot more. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I remember being there in those early days as well, and I remember that uh, the youth services would come along. I think it was like let's just say it was Tuesdays and Thursdays or Mondays and Thursdays or something. Whenever the library was open a little bit later, and uh, you guys would come in for an hour or two and, and hang out with the young people like Dylan, and then talk to them and stuff like that, and bring in snacks and things. So there was a lot of uh, really good um, rapport building and seeing you know what interests that the young people had in the community, and uh, building from there. So Dylan. Um, with the advent of Northwest Gaming, um, could you tell us a little bit about the formation of that, that group on a formal level and the grant that you applied for? Well, after having been to, the tournaments have been going on for several years at this point, and with each progressing tournament, the shift of control would shift more and more towards the participants and less and less towards the people who were supposed to be in charge because with every game perhaps not every person not every librarian or youth service member knew the intricacies of specific games or what rules people like to have so eventually more and more people started taking on control and having input but it all started in late 2015 when the youth services were trying to maintain more regular appearances at the library and we met a new youth service member 
who is discussing and trying to build things up and say, what do we want to be happening in the library more often? And <clears throat> that was when we started talking about wanting to have a more consistent video gaming group there because we decided, okay, why don't we have regular days where every once a week or two weeks people will show up and play video games and then we started doing that every few weeks we'll play video games and hang out and we thought well somebody mentioned to me oh we could improve these if we could afford a few things like snacks and whatnot and we could get money so we asked a youth service member and they told us about the grant we were asked oh we could get a lot more for this we should actually do something about it so we began applying for a Muni Valley grant, which because we had to apply for a grant, we had to be recognized as an independent group of young people, although we were still working with youth services. So that was how a group formed of several people who sometimes would have meetings with youth services, sometimes we'd have meetings on our own, planning what we need for a budget, planning what we need for the grant and figuring out what future tournaments would be like with us as the designated hosts. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. And what year was this specifically, do you recall? Uh, the formation, the, the proper formation of the game nights began in very late 2015. So at that point, there'd been several years of consistent tournaments with a consistent group of regulars by that point. And then throughout early 2016, we began applying for the grant. I remember we specifically submitted the application in the first week of March and then we were approved for the application in May, late May, I think in fact this week would have been I think the fourth anniversary of us getting the grant. I was just about to say that four years and that's like that's crazy because that means you said you have an average of about four tournaments a year. Yeah. So that, that's a lot of tournaments. That's a really successful thing that you, you've spearheaded there. So congratulations. That's a really big milestone. I know that the library is not exactly open at the moment, so you can't sort of celebrate the way you want to, but uh, with, a, like, with a massive tournament or something like that. But that might be something for the future. Maybe you could plan like a, a, a fifth birthday. You know what I mean? Like a fifth anniversary is usually something that, that's celebrated. Like the library, I remember Avondale Heights Library had a, had a fifth anniversary birthday party uh, several years ago. So, yeah, but that'd be something that you'd be interested in trying to maybe organize? Oh, definitely. That we could always do more celebrations, although there's so many milestones to choose. Do we choose when we first had that group meeting? Do we choose when we officially designated ourselves as Northwest Gaming when we're playing for the budget? Do we celebrate when we got the budget, which would be easy to celebrate because that's always the 25th of May? Do we celebrate when the first tournament happened eight years ago? There's so many significant dates as we've gone forward. Yeah. Because, yeah. No, that's really cool. And would you, like, how would you rate your experience, like, working alongside youth services and some of the library staff, obviously, as well? Has it been pleasurable overall? Oh, it has. I mean, we, it's always been an up-and-down experience. Sometimes there's been times, particularly in the early tournaments, there was a brief moment where we thought youth services was fading away a bit. There was a few less tournaments than normal. And that's really when we started to want to spearhead the applying for the grant because we figured, well, I mean, we can't blame youth services, but sometimes, hey, not everyone can be there or maybe, hey, they didn't get approving for the funding for this mm. tournament. But if we get a grant, it's in our hands so we can say, right, we have a tournament, we have this food, we have this prizes, we can make sure we have everything we need. Interesting. And Jess, do you have anything to add in regards to like the youth services side of things, like interacting with the Northwest gamers? And Oh, absolutely. I think because I came into the storyline, I think just towards the, maybe around the same time, actually, late 2015, 2016, my transitioning into working full time. And um, I remember this like coming into fruition and hearing about the grants from the previous worker and um, you know, coming along for some meetings and discussions about like, okay, what's the next game for the next tournament and all of that sort of stuff. And I think kind of going back to what you said, Dylan, it's really good that you guys had the ownership because that way, you know, one, it's completely yours, but two, you don't need to be reliant on, you know, the youth team. Like you could kind of have that autonomy to, you know, 
plan and only and you only really lent on us when you had questions and if that in even then there were very few and it would mostly be just in terms of just adhering to whatever the grant required you to do if anything mm, that's pretty cool and what exactly did you end up spending the grant money on dylan like what did you uh, invest in we got i believe roughly four and a half thousand dollars which we had to pay for a new con two new consoles a wii u and a playstation the playstation was used about one time and the wii u we still occasionally use but not as much now because times have moved on we've gone through so many consoles and games in eight years it's ridiculous mm. uh we also bought a projector because at the time of applying for the grant the library had a bad history of something always happening to their projector so now we've got our own projector even though That's now so we true. Design, that's so Even though true. now, because we do two, two tournaments at once, we rely on two projectors, so one of them's not ours anyway. We also spend a lot of money on prize vouchers because we always offer, offer a EV Games voucher, a 50 30 and $20 voucher. And we also put plenty of money towards catering because we needed to pay for pizzas and snacks before control eventually shifted back over to the library again. Interesting. Now that's, that's funny you mentioned as well about the different generations of consoles because it's been going for eight years. So we originally started with the Wii, right? That was the first yeah. tournament was on the Wii. The first oh man, that's so old. I know, <laughs> it's so old. And then we were playing Smash Brothers Brawl for several years and I can remember, it's become such a community thing because I can remember feeling the build up for the Wii U Smash Bros. and then going through the cycle of the Wii U Smash Bros. with each tournament and then getting the build up to the Switch one and that thing, I can now link Smash Bros. and the history of it with these tournaments, it's amazing. Yeah, it's actually really, really cool um, because you went from like the standard definition Smash Bros. like to the first HD edition and to then arguably the Switch, which ultimate, which is like the regarded as the best edition of the game. Am I right? I think it is considered the best version. Yeah, yeah. that, and I think the GameCube still gets gets a lot of love as well. Um, so the next question for you would be, what is it about the tournaments that that attracted you to get started with it and to keep coming back? Like, what are your motivations to keep hosting and promoting them? Well, what motivated me to start the, to be, begin attending the first tournaments was I just thought, you know what, I'll try this and see what it's like. And the first ones were all right, but after the first few ones, we had a consistent group. I could actually be somewhere consistently, see the same faces, play video games, occasionally win, and spend time with people that were starting to be a consistent group. And then as time shifted towards us taking control, I became to enjoy it a lot more because I always enjoy taking control of things. I always, there's no denying I'm obviously the world's biggest control freak in terms of these tournaments, but I have, that's the thing, I always come back and as time moved on, less and less people were involved in the hosting and the organizing to the point where it's almost entirely me. I'm the one organizing what the tournament's going to be, the format, the way everything is from the beginning of the day to the end of the day. All of that decision making was mine on what happened. Not entirely mine. I got suggestions from other participants on what games to play, but nobody else is really putting their foot forward on terms of how do we play in the day. And I think a lot of people often overlook of how much has to go into that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, in terms of like, you know, honing your leadership skills and stuff like that, because I've, I met you a really long time ago, back in 2012, um, when you were still in high school, just a kid really. And now you're, you know, a young adult, um, or an adult, I should say, but you're still, you know, coming back and I've noticed a big change in you, you know, you've grown up a lot and stuff. How, do you think this has helped improve your, your leadership abilities and being more vocal? Uh, well, obviously it has. It's, it's that's the thing when i first started it was just me showing up and even in the first few tournaments although i would be talking a lot i didn't really engage and make many friends until we started regularly having the same people but then as time went on and we started to create our own group that was when 
I really started to become more of a more of a leader. Although when we were forming the grant and we were trying to do things, we always tried to maintain this idea of there's no one person in charge, it's not a dictatorship, which usually worked. A lot of the times, not you start to realize some people are just not going to be putting their foot forward as much as others. So naturally, certain leaders will emerge. Eventually, certain people thought, oh, I don't know if I'm about hosting this thing, but I'm always happy to host. I'm always happy to be at front and center. And once I realized, once I started that, I realized how amazing it is. Because at first, even though I was involved in organizing, I'd just be off to the side, making sure things are running smoothly. Now I'm front and center. And you can really tell that participants, especially people who knew, can actually recognize, yes, I am the one who is in charge. I'm the one who knows what's happening. All questions go to me. And it really does become exciting when you realize, oh, all that attention and all that leadership falls to me. Okay. So according to the timer at the top of the screen, we've got about nine, just over nine minutes to go. So let's go on to the next question. Sorry to make it a rush. Um, so you seem to, you know, focus on, on fighting games like Smash Bros um, and stuff like that. Or, um, you know, I think Mario Kart has also been used a number of times. Um, maybe Tekken, I think, in one, one tournament. Um, so what are the games that you focus on specifically and, and why do you choose those? Uh, we've, I'm not sure, well, I guess because Smash Brothers is the biggest fighting game, it's become our mainstay. Almost every tournament has had a Smash Brothers focus, but now we've gotten into the habit of having two tournaments at once. One tournament will be Smash, but another tournament will be the other game. And that other game usually is fan suggested either through our Facebook page or our Discord page, where people would suggest, oh, should we play this game or that game? Or a new game's come out, and I thought, let's try this one. We've played, in the past few years, we've played um, Mario Kart, Crash Team Racing, Mario Tennis, Tekken, Street Fighter. We were about to do Naruto. We've done quite a lot of games, sometimes ones where everyone knows what they're doing. Or we had a tournament like ours where literally no one, including myself, had ever played the game. It was hilarious. <laughs> that is like an equal footing for, for everybody. <laughs> Was oh, that, it was a great thing. Was that popular? Did people enjoy ARMS? Because that's very yeah. interactive, obviously. You have to get up and actually use the motion controllers. and. Oh, well, you don't have to. There was another way of doing it. but Oh, yeah, you don't have to with that. I thought you yeah. did. But yeah, it was a very fun thing, although I wasn't necessarily the one hosting it. It was always fun when people walk into the room and like, oh, I don't know about ARMS. I've never played it. And then we announced, well, okay, no one so far has said they know how to play it, which made it really hilarious although predictably the same people who usually win won that tournament too so we've tried to throw off the game to make sure it's not always the same people and it, it almost always is hmm, interesting <laughs> uh jess do you have anything to add about the game choices that you've seen over the years or uh, i was gonna say i do recall like the time when we've had the tournament up at our youth space in Nidri and the setup, I, I really thought it was really clever how you guys had like kind of the area for if you got knocked out of a round, you could still participate in something and not feel like you'd really lost per se. You could still be involved in, um, in the game, just you had your own little kind of private corner. Or if you didn't want to participate in the main tournament at all and actually just wanted to just play a game and try something out that was available and I know that that was something you guys have workshopped over the years so I, I like that I think there was like it was like Pikmin I think that was the thing that you, you guys played like just for fun uh at one point uh oh, we at had, one, yeah we had many days, yeah that was uh, starting at the youth space we really wanted to move to an idea of not always having it just be one tournament because yeah at the first tournaments, a common complaint was, okay, you play a tournament, you have a few games, and that's it. You lose, you're out, and that's the end. But now, with the youth spaces, we had a normal tournament on stage, and then off to the side, we had a TV where it wasn't a tournament, you could just play for fun. And then we, we moved back to the library, although instead of that, we had two tournaments, so you had more focus. And then we had three tournaments, because once one Smash tournament ended, we'd move on to another. So you were almost always getting ready to play a game. And then because naturally one tournament would finish before the other, that side of the room could now become room for you to just play for fun. So people were a lot less bored. We were always integrating new ideas, whether it be having a casual corner or having trivia or just having new ways for people to get involved or to just shake up the ways of 
making sure more people can get a prize, not just the people who always know how to win Smashbox. What we've loved over the years as well is the fact that, you know, because you, you guys know who your audience are, you listen to everybody, and that's why, I think that's one of the reasons why these things go so well. Like, you don't ignore suggestions, you take on the feedback and you adapt. And because, you know, if you didn't do that, then you probably wouldn't be having uh, the traction that you have. And this momentum is incredible, you know, like, and what I was saying to one of the other librarians um, at your tournament this year is that you just see so much of like a diverse age group at your tournaments. Like you have some really like, you know, you've got preteens there all the way up into their early 20s. And you know, that's incredible. It's, it can be really hard to get people of such a um, age group mingling and you guys have done that seamlessly. And it's just, for, for myself as the person on the youth team, that is just so heartening and like, it's just incredible. Like you guys should be incredibly proud of yourselves. Yeah, you should be. They're, they're really, it's amazing to sort of be at the tournaments and to see it all unfolding. They're just so popular and everyone is so happy to be there um, and really supportive of each other as well. I mean, there's people like chanting each other's names and, and, you know, spurring each other on and always handshaking and stuff like that after, you know, winning and losing. It's actually really a very graceful sort of experience. You know, everyone's being very, a lot of sportsmanship as well, which is a good thing. Um, so we've got about four and a half minutes. So let's move on to the last question. So what do you see for the future, Dylan? Of, oh, sorry, what was that? I said we may have to go into a part two. Uh, we I might. Know. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. What do you see for the future of uh, Northwest Gaming? Um, I'm not really sure. I mean, since... well, post COVID, anyway. You know, like there has to that that has to be the caveat. It would. I mean, like every tournament, the previous tournament is just a learning experience for the next one. Every time I finish a tournament, I realize, oh, maybe I should do this thing. Maybe I should try not to do this thing as much because not just the organizing, but the hosting as well, the way I present myself or somebody else at the tournament. And sometimes I've got to remember to remember this is a community event. And sometimes I think, okay, I'm just having fun with friends, but it isn't really a community event with anyone there. So it's always a big, massive learning experience where I really do take on a lot of criticism at times, but I do take it on. So the future is ever changing. I've just got to think, okay, what can I do next? Just figure out what game people want, what new ideas can I try? Yeah, that's awesome. And what do you think, Jess, in, in regards from youth services side? You guys will obviously be continuing to support it as long as it uh, keeps moving forward. I know the library will. So Absolutely. And like for from the perspective of Avondale Heights in particular, you know, like there isn't really a lot that's there for young people in that area. It's quite remote to everything and it's hard to access. So the fact that you know, Northwest Gaming exists in Avondale Heights is such a blessing because, you know, you are bringing young people out of their homes because, you know, there's actually, you know, it's, it's usually known for the elderly population, but, you know, there are young people that are living with their parents or living with their grandparents and, you know, they, they can come to the library and hang out and mm. have something cool to participate in. So, yeah, we definitely want to be there to support it and spread the word and let other young people know in the area that it's happening and to head down to the library every school holidays. And, you know, yeah. to the other catch-ups that ha might happen in between, like to get on down. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really positive way to finish it for sure. Um, so I, I think that you guys, Dylan, personally for Northwest Gaming, should be aiming for like a really big tournament for the comeback. So obviously, you know, we're all very optimistic that eventually this this time we're going through is going to pass and things will get back to normal and i think a really good aim would be to have one of those anniversary game ops for sure um and me and jess in the library will support you you know every step of the way so um just quickly dylan is there any games on the horizon that you're looking forward to playing anything that's coming out soon that you've got your eye on mm -hmm. Not particularly, because there haven't been many games announced lately, although this year, time of year, usually games start to get announced in a few months, but there haven't been many games I can think about coming out. We know practically nothing about the next year or the end of the year, especially no games would be good at the tournament. The next tournament would definitely be Smash Brothers and whatever somebody suggests. Honestly, if we try to find a suggestion, it was probably going to be Smash Brothers and Naruto, because that's what we were going to do this April before everything changed. So... It Very could be cool. anything. 
Yeah, nice, nice. So there is an idea that the three of us are going to get together and play a little bit of Smash Bros in the next video um, that we can upload. Um, so you'll basically, hopefully, Dylan, walk us through. I think Jess is a novice at the game. Am I right, Jess? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> same, same here, don't worry. I own the game, but I, I never really put that much time into it outside of unlocking all the characters. Dylan, so you can be our guru and maybe you can walk us through the, the more basic elements of the game. And then anyone who's interested in coming along to the tournaments but doesn't know much about Smash, maybe they can get a bit of a schooling, you know, on, on how it all goes. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a good time for us to just talk and talk about Smash Brothers and how I run tournaments and whatnot. So, yeah, we'll be doing more of that. Yeah, for sure. It'd be great to hear more about, you know, what goes into it. Um, all right. I think that that'll do us for today, guys. I want to thank you both for being here. And uh, Dylan, good luck with everything in the future. And, uh, you know, and hopefully everyone will stay tuned for more.